G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. Uh, today we're going to talk about RPVOT, which is the Rotating Pressure Vessel Oxidation Test. It's a really important test for turbine oils, but there are some tricks to using it. So um, I'd encourage you not to just use, let's say, the OEM limits and then condemn your oil, because it really needs to be understood in context. Let's get into it. All right, let's talk about RPVOT, which is the Rotating Pressure Vessel Oxidation Test, also sometimes known as RBOT, which is the Rotating Bomb Oxidation Test. Now, what this test is for is to design um, this, or well, it's supposed to simulate the accelerated aging of a turbine oil. Turbine oils can last thousands of hours in service when uh, they're used correctly, and we obviously can't wait thousands of hours for a test result. So what we're trying to do is to is to stress the oil to a much greater extent than it would typically see in service so we can accelerate that oxidation process. Now, a couple of things to remember is that it was developed in a period of time when group one turbine oils were the norm. And as we've spoken about in previous videos, the industry has kind of moved on from group one formulations and we're predominantly group two with a little bit of group three. That changes the solubility and oxidation characteristics of the oil. It's also designed for RNO oils. That's called, uh, so RNO stands for rust and oxidation inhibited oils. And what this test does is it measures the resistance to oxidation rather than the actual oxidation. So if you remember from the FTIR oxidation video that we did uh, just last week, what the oxidation uh, by FTIR test is looking for is oxidation byproducts. So it was looking for that C double bond O, which is produced when many hydrocarbon compounds oxidize. So it's looking for the actual traces of oxidation. This here is trying to measure how much can a lubricant resist oxidation. So it hasn't oxidized yet, how, how much more reserve is there in this oil? So it's a, a slightly different thing. The test method is called ASTM D2272. I'm gonna quickly run you through exactly how this test works. You have a container, and my understanding is that it's about 5 ml of water to about 50 grams of the lubricant that you're trying to test. And uh, what we do as part of the acceleration process is we put a copper coil in it. So copper acts as an oxidation catalyst. So a lot of metals are oxidation catalysts, and copper very much so. And we're going to put that into the test equipment. Now what does the test equipment kind of look like on the inside after you've put this pressure cap on? Well, on the inside, the uh, the vessel is it's pressure sealed, right? So this is uh, a completely airtight container, and it sits in um, a little holder. And that holder is important to know is is magnetic. So what are all these components? Okay, we've got a pressure chamber lid. We have a, a Teflon insulator to ensure that everything is airtight. There is the pressure chamber itself and there is a magnetic cup, like I just said. And the reason why that magnetic cup is there is because on the bottom, we are going to install a motor and a magnet, right? So the magnetic cup and the magnet are going to turn synchronously, right? Now, we start the test off at room temperature and about 90 PSI. And very quickly, we're going to ramp the temperature up to about 150 degrees Celsius and 190 PSI with a bit of rotation. And then what we are gonna do is measure the amount of time that it takes for the pressure to reduce by 25 PSI. Now, why is that? What's going on inside? When we heat the thing up and we subject it to high pressure, the oxidation process is going on. And we've seen this auto oxidation diagram a lot, right? And so that's what's going on inside this vessel. So the oil is starting to oxidize. So all of that is going on within the pressure vessel and specifically oxygen that's in that headspace is going into the hydrocarbon because it is providing, if you like, the oxidation for, sorry, the oxygen for the oxidation process. So as the oxygen kind of goes into and becomes bonded with hydrocarbons in the oil, what you're going to see is a pressure reduction, right? Because some of, if you like, the air is being consumed by the lubricant. So as it's consumed, the pressure is going to drop inside the vessel. And when the pressure drop um, exceeds 
25.4 PSI, that's a very specific number, but 25.4 PSI, that's when we stop the test. And the measurement of RPVOT is the number of minutes from the start of the test to when that pressure drop occurs. So why is that? Well, if you were to measure along two axes and you have pressure and time, what we typically see as far as the spectrum goes is this first increase. So that's when you're going from 90 PSI to 190 PSI, which is the test pressure, right? And then we're going to see it flatline for a bit. And that's because although oxidation is kind of going on, um, we have oxidation inhibitors. So it's, it's trying to resist the, the oxidation process. And eventually the oil is going to sort of succumb to, to oxidation, and we're going to see that rapid drop in, uh, in pressure. Now, when that pressure drop from the maximum reaches uh, minus 25.4 PSI, that's when we say that the, the test is stopped. Now, remember, as I said before, this test was designed for Group 1 turbine oils. However, um, we obviously have new formulations on the market, and they actually behave a little bit differently, which makes RPVOT a little bit... Um, interesting when it comes to group 2, group 3, and synthetic hydrocarbons because the beginning of the test is exactly the same. We're, we're ramping up the pressure. But what we see is a kind of a more gradual decline. There's not really a cutover point. So we're still using this number, this 25.4 PSI uh, pressure drop, but that's actually really based on a group 1 turbine oil where we see a, a really big cutover. So RPVOT is probably, it's, it's still a good data point to have, but it's probably not as accurate a predictor of, um, you know, of oxidation capacity um, as it would be in, in a group one oil. So effectively what, we, what we're testing for is, okay, you have a new oil that can last, uh, I'm gonna pick an arbitrary number here, let's say a thousand, a thousand minutes. And then as it oxidizes, if I were to test the used oil, it will drop off faster. And then, of course, if we keep using it, it'll drop off faster again. And the point at which we say that the, the oil is no longer usable is when the used oil RPVOT value reaches 25% of what the new oil value was. Right. So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea for where that 25% number comes from. One thing that's really important to know about this as well is I've seen a lot of people use RPVOT as kind of a proxy for how good a turbine oil is going to be. And I would caution against that. The reason for that is because you can kind of cheat the test. Remember, one of the ways that we catalyze oxidation and that we stress the oil even more is by including a copper coil in, uh, in the turbine oil. So if, you're, if I'm a formulator and I want to cheat this specific test, then I would just load up my turbine oil with copper corrosion inhibitors, right? So because they would, because copper corrosion inhibitors have the effect of deactivating the, the metal catalysts, um, you're effectively negating the effect of uh, the copper uh, coil. And so in, in many respects, you can kind of cheat the test, right? Because there is a lot more copper in, in one of these samples than you would typically see in turbine operation. So that's why I would caution against people saying a bigger number is necessarily better. It may be indicative of uh, a high quality turbine oil, but it's certainly not the be all and end all. And as with all things, don't just use RPVOT uh, to the exclusion of all other oil tests. This really needs to be complementary to a whole bunch of things, specifically FTIR oxidation, ruler, MP, uh, MPC, and, uh, and some other tests as well. All right, hopefully that's been helpful for you guys. Um, if you've got questions or comments, as usual, please leave them down below. Um, otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.